Welcome back to my channel. In my previous video, which was a while ago, I showed you how I trained a neural network to reconstruct the flow past the cylinder. Since then, I have been planning to implement a trained physics-informed neural network in a CFD solver such as OpenFoam, which is an open-source CFD solver. I had the idea to create a custom boundary condition based on the reconstructed flow by machine learning. Pins are a great tool for reconstructing the solution to the physical system of equations. As in the last video, some of you were wondering what's the point of reconstructing the solution using pins. Neural networks can help speed up CFD simulations by implementing trained models. For instance, there is ongoing research in using pins to speed up chemical kinetics calculations. Some of the trained models have already been implemented in combination with CFD and offer accurate predictions. Other examples include predicting wall shear stress in turbulent flows. In case of wall-bounded flows, the wall functions are often used to predict the turbulent viscosity at the wall. The wall function is usually calculated using some iterative solvers. In case of large eddy simulations, predicting the shear stress at the wall is even more complicated. Therefore, some research aims at developing wall stress by training pins. I decided to create my own extension for OpenFoam. My library is called WakeFoam and it contains a custom inflow boundary condition. The basic idea was to fit the data from the neural network into the CFD domain in order to have a wake at the boundary, which would propagate within the computational domain. Even though I am quite an experienced OpenFoam user, programming a custom library from scratch was completely new to me. Thus, I had to learn a bit of OpenFoam coding. Then, I continued with creating the boundary condition. The library was coded in C++, whereas my machine learning code was programmed in Python. Therefore, I had to reprogram the neural network into C++. For this task, I used the C++'s version of PyTorch. First, I coded the neural network in C++, for which I exported the trained model, which I discussed in the previous video. Then, I started coding the boundary condition in OpenFoam. Unfortunately, there were some issues with coupling the PyTorch with OpenFoam's boundary condition class. So instead, I decided to make an external executable file. This file will be opened with OpenFoam's C++ script. I tried to implement the boundary condition on an empty domain and I obtained some successful results. My idea for the project was to allow users to specify the downstream distance behind the cylinder at the boundary phase. Hence, I had to increase the size of the training sample. To obtain the new training data, I had to run a CFD simulation and sample the data at locations ranging from 6 diameters to 22 diameters in the streamwise direction behind the cylinder, and from negative 6 diameters to 6 diameters in the vertical direction. To obtain accurate training data, I decided to use a structured mesh. Training the neural network turned out to be more difficult and time-consuming than I expected. As a result, I had to restructure the neural network in order to reduce the loss function to satisfactory levels. For the final design, I used three hidden layers with 192 neurons each, and after a few days of training, I managed to build a working penis model. The results were not exactly ideal, but due to the limited resources I had, I decided to proceed with the model. So, I exported the PT file and copied it into the C++ code. To finalize the library, I decided to add some additional parameters such that it would allow the users to have more flexibility. Specifically, I added the streamwise and spanwise parameters where users can define the coordinate system for the inflow velocity. Also, user can specify the free stream velocity outside of the wake and the diameter of the cylinder. The dimensions of the domain will be adjusted according to the diameter, in order to keep the inflow data physically relevant. Additionally, the free stream velocity and diameter should be set up such that the Reynolds number is equal to 100. I run the case with empty domain again to verify the updated setup and the results were correct. I also decided to run an additional case of a cylinder operating within the wake of another cylinder of an equal size. This resulted in an interesting and complex flow field.
Unfortunately, in the current state of development, this library is limited to a single processor. The full project, including the test cases, is available on my GitHub page. The link is in the description. I will definitely come back to this project and try to expand it to allow for parallel computing and to include more Reynolds numbers. So, subscribe to my channel if you're interested, feel free to share your ideas in the comment section. Also, don't forget to check out my previous video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.